Welcome to Software Defined Networking, part one. Uh, this is a lecture in the framework of the Colibri project. If we talk about convention networks, um, we, so we see that they consist of uh, many kinds of specialized devices, like routers, switches, middle boxes, and each device runs a complex and distributed control software and needs to be configured individually. Configuration interfaces um, are different, depend on the vendor, on um, the implementation, and even across different products of the same vendor, you will have and you will find different interfaces and in dif in different um, operating systems and um, operating protocols or control protocols. We see that we have an increased complexity, um, which slows down in the end um, the innovation and we have an um, um, inflating um, amount of capital and operational costs because of this inflexibility of the network to control and adapt it in the way we need. If we look to um, the idea that we would like to um, have the, soft, the network more uh, flexible, better to be controlled in a way like software-defined networking, uh, we see how, do we, how can we get there. And the first thing is, we, um, we think about active networks, uh, where we introduce programmable functions in the networks to lower the barrier to innovation. That's um, the one idea that we want to have um, a faster access to innovation. And the second important part is, um, is to separate the control from the data plane. The data plane needs to be ex extremely fast and forwards the packets according to the line speed. The control plane, we want to have very flexible, and that's why the differentiation or the separation between control and data plane is the way to go. And therefore we should, and we have implement, developed open interfaces between data and control plane. And um, uh, then in the consequence, um, a centralized controller is introduced, or a logical centralized controller is introduced, which can perform the control plane operations and uh, configure the data plane accordingly. Then um, the question is about the network operating system. Or, um, so we want to abstract the installation of a state in the network devices from the network management and control, um, controlling applications. So if you look at um, the different um, on the timeline, active networks was discussed already in the late 90s. It did not come really to the market uh, mainly because of um, performance and security issues. And then we had this um, separation between data and control plane already from the early 2000s on. And it really came into access um, with having defined interfaces and network operating systems in the late um, first century of this, uh, on the late um, 2007, 2008 um, area. What is the key feature of SDN, software defined networking? It is, as mentioned before, the separation of control and um, uh, data plane. Um, we have this logically centralized controller introduced, which has a global view of the network and can configure and route traffic just differently than if you only had a local view. We have an open interface between the devices in the control plane and um, those in the data plane. And with this, we can uh, program, uh, we have a programmability of the network by external applications. How does that look in the architecture? We have the convention network node on the left, um, which um, shows um, as uh, routers and switches are done, or network nodes are done at the moment. Um, we have data planes, switching and forwarding mainly, and on, on, on we have an internal application protocol interface, and um, we have um, the control plane, which has something like quality of service, routing, link management, and we have some application on tops and these are on a um, device and vendor specific operating system and they are, don't have any open interfaces. The idea where we want to go to is the SDN network node where we have the data plane and an open API um, to an application programming interface. And the data plane is still on the device but the, um, the control plane is uh, moved or can be moved to external devices, for example, the net central network controller. And here we have the control plane, which has a holistic network view, at least of a part of the network, and can decide on the perfect routing from 
um, with a more global view, and it can perform a lot of tasks like um, flow-based flow routing, uh, quality of service routing, and so on and so forth. And we have network applications on top, um, like traffic shaping or um, billing or um, volume management. If you look into more details, um, we have the applications I just mentioned on top here. We have traffic engineering, access control, traffic monitoring, mobility management, energy efficient management, so we can think about uh, can we configure the network to be as energy efficient as possible. And then we have the northbound interface um, to the um, logical centralized controller, so it's only logical centralized, can be decentralized of course as well for um, security and for scalability reasons. And there we have um, the network controller which has um, a more or less complete view on the network and decides on how to handle different traffic flows and packets and um, what routing to be, formed, to be performed. And then uh, we have the southbound interface which leads um, to the data plane, to the forwarding, and there we have the different data plans, a uh, data path in the different network devices. Each of the network device is um, then controlled by the control plane, which is centralized. The applications I just mentioned, is, these are programs that communicate with the desired network requirements and behaviors um, to the SDN controller via the northbound interface. We had this um, questions, or the, the I, um, like traffic engineering, uh, but also to think about more energy efficient um, states of the network. They use an abstract, abstracted global view of the network for the internal decision making purposes. The SDN controller is the second entity um, from the hierarchy, from top down. Um, it's a logically centralized entity which has a global view of the network. It translates the requirements from the SDN applications to the SDN data parts and provides the SDN applications the abstracted view on the network in the other direction. The logical centralized controller may consist of multiple controllers connected hierarchically via their communication interfaces. So it doesn't need to be one physical unit. The data part is a logical network device. Uh, it processes and forwards the data. It may encompass all or a subset of physical substrate resources. It allows multiple data paths which can coexist in one physical network element. If you talk about the interfaces, we have the control the data plane interface, which is the southbound interface. It's an interface between the SDN controller and the SDN data path which provides the programmable control of all forwarding operations. It has some kind of advertisement capabilities to announce on status. It has statistics reporting and notification on events like failures. The control to data plane interface, CDPI, is implemented in an open, vendor neutral and operator interoperable manner. And that's the important part that you can combine different vendors, uh, equipment from different vendors in the same network and have um, the advanced control um, applications, control facilities, which you don't have in networks today. If you talk about the northbound interface, so the interface between the SDN controller and the applications, it enables direct expression of the network requirements and behaviors from the SDN application to the SDN controller. Okay, now it's time just to revisit what I just said. 